Greetings and welcome to a new video about analog electronics. We continue with our diode circuit and this is our example number five. In this example, we'll look at a more complicated circuit where we have three diodes and also three DC voltage sources. So it will be a little bit complicated example compared to the previous four examples. Of course, we will work out everything in the calculation step by step and also verify these in our SPI simulations. So let's look at our circuit. As said, we have three sources, VA, VB, and VC. They are here. And we have three resistors, R1, R2, and R3. The values are shown here. And we have three diodes, D1, D2, and D3. The diodes are considered to be ideal, but we will use the constant voltage model, and I will describe this shortly. And what we want is actually these five values. We want the current through a D1, ID1, which is this, and ID2 also, which is this current, and also ID3, so every, each diode current. And also the node voltage at node X and node, node Y, so we have five unknowns here in the circuit. So as said, we'll use the constant voltage model for our diode, and that represents the following situation. The diode will be on, so it will conduct current when we when the diode voltage reaches the value which is vd on and that has a value of 0.7 volts if you reach that value the diode is forward bias so you will have a connection and you can model your diode with the battery so it has a value of 0.7 when it is not the case then the diode is an open so that means this connection for example here or there where the diode is off there will be an open circuit and if it is uh, on so this diode is conducting you can represent this by a, just a battery and the battery will be then from this anode to the cathode always the case okay this is now the model we will use for this circuit and of course in our solutions we assume in this case a condition for these three diodes because we can have multiple combinations here and we just say Every diode here, D1, D2, and D3 are on. I can also begin with D1 is off and D2 and D3 are on. That's also possible, but let me start with everything is on and we work out and see afterwards if this is really the case. So we need to verify our assumption. Okay, now if I make this assumption, I see the following, the Vy, this node voltage, will be then the minus the Vd3 on. So this is a reverse uh, part of that one. Now, since it is on the D3, that means this voltage is minus 0.7 volts. So, I already have one of the unknowns here, considering, of course, this condition. Now, for the Vx, I can also say the following. Since the Vx is here and the Vy is there, and this voltage drop between these two is just 0.7, but I also have here minus 0.7, so I can also see it like this. Vx is equal to, so this node voltage is equal to D2, that is the Vd2 on, plus actually Vy, which is the minus Vd3 on, and that will give me 0 0.7 minus 0 0.7, 0 volts. So in this case, I have 0 volts at node X, again in this condition. So we will now use this Vx and Vy values in the next analysis. So we set up the Kirchhoff's current law at node X. So we have now the I1 here, which is flowing through R1. That will produce now ID1 and ID2. So we can set up at node X the following equation. I1 is equal to ID1 plus ID2. Now ID, I1 is the voltage VA minus the voltage at node X. And then divided by the R1 will give you the current I1. ID1 is this expression, so which is the Vx minus the voltage drop across the diode in the forward condition and a minus the VB that's shown here and a plus the ID2 in this case I cannot represent it using the Ohm's law because there is no resistor here in this brand so we just call it ID2 okay we have now this now let's substitute the values we have it is 10 minus 0 here because the VX was considered to be 0 in this condition in our assumption divided by 1000 for the R1 is equal to 0 minus 0 0.7 minus minus 8 because the VB is minus 8 divided by 4000 for the R2 and plus again ID2. Now 
look at this equation. Let's then work it out. This will be then left and right hand side multiplied by 4000 to get rid of the fractions. So you will get 10 times actually uh, 10 times 4000 over 1000 will be then 4 times 10 will be then 40 on the left side. This numerator is here 7.3 in total. Divide by 4000 times 4000 again will give you 7.3 and then this will be then multiplied by 4000. So you will have this expression. If I move on, that will give me uh, 32.7 is equal to 4000 ID2. So if I now work it out, I will get 8.175 milliamps. So in this case, you see the assumption for D2 on is correct. Okay. So well, let's move on and then also work out the Kirchhoff's current law at node Y and also verify the others. So node Y, I have this I3 here and I2, ID2 and ID3 will actually make up this I3. So I can say I3 is ID2 plus ID3. Okay, again, ID2 I just represented as this because there is no uh, resistor there, so I cannot give it in the Ohm's law formation. ID3 is also not possible because it's also a branch only diode. So anything I can do is with this branch, which is then for the resistor and this VC. So again, this voltage here is Vy minus Vc over R3 will give you the current I3 is equal to that. Now let's substitute everything we have, which is minus 0 0.7 for the Vy. Again, for the condition we have and the assumption, minus minus 9 because Vc was minus 9 volts over 2000 for the RC, shown here. Now we have calculated in our assumption the ID2, which is shown here, 8.175 milliamps. So I substitute it here, plus ID3. So this result will give me for the ID3, if you work it out, minus 4.025 milliamps, which is smaller than zero. Thus D3 is actually off. So our assumption that D3 was on is not correct. So then we assume that I D3 is zero and we move on and we continue with a new assumption. So we already have something, but we need to make a new assumption to calculate the rest of the parameters. So the new condition or new assumption is the following. D2, D1 and D2 are on, but D3 is off. And I now we have one of the unknowns, which is then I D3 is zero amps. Okay, now let's move on. If this D3 is off, then this branch is an open circuit. So we have now, again, Kirchhoff's current law at node X, and we'll do that also for node Y uh, later. So with node X, we can see the I1, again, this one is equal to ID1 plus ID2. Now again, set up the equations using Ohm's law. That can be done because each branch has a resistor here. And also this one, because this is open circuit, so the right most uh, the right part here of the branch so I have actually from node X all the way to ground a complete set this branch so I have this equa equation so for the last part I have this if I now substitute the values everything I have and then again Vx is not anymore zero because that was the assumption for the first case I have now the following I can now substitute the values only Vx will be then unknown so everything will be included the resistors the VA, the VB and the VC, and also the VD1 on and VD2 on, both from 0.7, because we assume they are on. So if I now multiply the left and the right hand side by 4000, I have this expression. So 4 times the numerator here, just this, and then 2 times the numerator here. And this is again 7.3, and this is 8.3, so we will get uh, rid of this uh, the parentheses, or you will work out the parentheses, You'll have this one and collect now the Vx terms and the numbers, the constants. You will get 16.1 is equal to 7 times Vx. So the Vx will be then 2.3 volts exactly in this case. So we have now a new value for the Vx. And that is not the case as the first case. So we have now the 2.3 volts. Now we will use this for the next analysis, which is then the diode current. So let me place it here and then move on the diode current one. Set up the equation also for this branch again. So ID1 now, and we have the Vx new value. If I now substitute that and also the Vd1 on is known and a Vb and the R2. So let's substitute this. 
what you get is then 2.4 milliamps. This is now the new value for the ID1. And since this is larger than zero, we can say this D1 is on and that assumption is correct. Now moving on to ID2 in a similar form for this branch, the completed from all the way from X to ground because this is open again. So we have this and if I now substitute the values here, you will get 5.3 milliamps and that is again zero, larger than zero, thus D2 is on. So the assumption for D1 and D2 are on is correct and the D3 is off is also now verified. So this assumption is uh, verified and we can now say, let's now calculate also the VY and the rest. So VY is this voltage at this node is this voltage, so the voltage drop across R3 plus VC. That's actually shown here. Now since I3 is equal to ID2, that is because they are in series, we can just call and um, use the ID3 here in the voltage drop equation for R3. So we find now the following 2000 for R3 times the 5.3 milliamps here, plus the minus 9 for the VC. And if I now work it out, it will get exactly minus 1.6 volts. So we have now everything. So we have now calculated now, and this is the summary. So we see the ID1, ID2, ID3, and the VX and the VY values. And again, you see the D3 is off, the diode 3. So that's why we have zero amps here. And we will see this also in the simulator shortly. And this is now the result, the simulation result. You can see this here, the, di uh, the VA, VB, and VC. You can see these are inverted, so they're reversed because I need to have minus eight and minus nine here. So I flipped actually the battery there, diode one, diode two, and diode three. You see the current arrows here to determine the currents here in these branches. You see also the voltage nodes there, so Vx and Vy. Now let's see one by one what we have. ID1 here is 2.41 milliamps. We have 2.40, so also very close. For ID2, we have 5.303 milliamps. We have 5.3 milliamps, so a very nice, very close uh, agreement with the simulator. We see the ID3 is minus 1.002 nanoamps. So you can say it's almost zero. That's why we have here also zero amps. So this is definitely not conducting. It's an open circuit. And we have the Vx is 2.287. So rounding off to 2.3 uh, volts. So also very nice. This is 1.606 volts. And this also, and we have 1.6 volts. So also very close. The uh, slight differences between our calculation and all the measurement result is due to that voltage drop uh, or, uh, across the diodes actually, actually because it's not 700 millivolts it could be a little bit larger or smaller and that will give you some errors in the actual values but we'll look at their simulation result now and also see what the actual value of these d1 d2 and d3 voltages are and see why these small differences appear so let's now jump to the spy simulator and also discuss the situation there yeah, right. We are now in the simulator. We see the VA, VB, and VC, and the three diodes, and the R1, R2, and R3. So, I already prepared the circuit for you. So, you see the current arrows for measuring the currents. You see the nodes for the voltage pins. So, let's now do the analysis and DC analysis and calculate nodal voltages. That will give you all the values in your circuit for your measurements. So, let's see. So we see all the values we have just discussed in our slide, uh, slide presentation. I would like to determine, for example, the voltages across each diode. For example, D1, we, by the way, assumed and determined that D1 and D2 are on and D3 was off. That means in our assumption, in our constant voltage model, this must be then 0.7 volts. This must be also 0.7 volt for D2, and this must be then zero. I mean open circuit, so this is not the zero, but this is just an open circuit that means zero current. So let's start with the D1. It is 646 millivolts, so it is not 700. So we see here an error of 54 millivolts. So that is perfectly fine. It is not a, let's say a surprise or a disaster. For this one, it is 600. 81 approximately so 19 millivolts error so those small errors actually do uh, cause some 
variation also in the simulation. So we assume everything is 0 0.7 and 0 0.7. If we know the exact value of the diode voltages, then this will be uh, all uh, actually exactly the same as in the simulator. Let's also look at the diode voltage here because it goes up in this direction, but it is negative. So it means this is not possible in the reverse di uh, direction. So you see this current flow here is indeed correct. So there is no connection here. So that will be then the reverse bias. So D3 is definitely off. You can also see the following. This branch is definitely one branch. If I click on the R3 here to determine the current and also the voltage, you see for the current for the R3 is 5.303 milliamps, which is also here. So this branch is definitely this one. So if this was different than that one, you see also some current here. There's some current there, but this is very small, so you can just ignore that. All right, guys, this is for this example number five about a diode circuit with three diodes, three DC volt sources, more challenging than the previous four examples. To illustrate again the concept in more detail, if you have any questions about this or any other examples before this, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. You can see the playlist. For all the videos about diode circuit analog electronics in the description of this video you can also look at my channel for more we see you next time in another interesting video take care